changes that have happened recently. Um, but we are. This this is the the critical decade. We have to be doing uh, a lot more than we are at the moment to to meet our um, climate change targets. Um, is that going to work? Right. So we have 7.7 .7 billion people in the planet. Um, 37 billion tons of CO2 emissions coming from those and uh, a third of those generally come from buildings in the construction industry um, is 30 to 40 percent or so depending on what uh, what metrics you look at and the earth can absorb about half of those um, but it's though those emissions that aren't absorbed that, that are uh, are an issue when we look at the the UK in particular uh, this is a graph from the uh, Committee on Climate Change report from last year. Uh, they have estimated that we are on target to meet our uh, next climate budget, but the uh, the next one we're uh, we're going to miss. We're not achieving the the rights targets that we are uh, are setting ourselves, and that, that's um, it's a legal requirement for us to meet our net zero target by 2050. It's 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 in legislation. And the energy use along the uh, the uh, the axis on the the side there, and it shows that um, each one of these grey lines is a building, uh, and the average is the the green line across, which shows that there isn't a huge amount of correlation between a low EPC and um, and low energy use. It's uh, it's a bit of a shocking um, situation, but we have an energy use performance gap. We, uh, that we desperately need to, uh, to, to solve. And then we also have the, the issue of uh, embodied carbon. Uh, when we do achieve low energy buildings, the embodied carbon, which in these pie graphs are, are the orange, there's the, the uh, embodied, carbons, uh, embodied carbon emissions from the uh, building, and then the uh, embodied carbon uh, over its life cycle. In, in orange, it shows that low and low total energy buildings um, perform uh, perform well, but the uh, the embodied carbon becomes much more of an issue. It's a much larger proportion of the total carbon emissions, which is why we're uh, we're looking at the, the twenty thirty climate challenge and, and trying to uh, to resolve this issue. And the the background of the the twenty thirty challenge is uh, the UN's sustainable development goals. So I don't know if anyone has come across these, but these are uh, uh, 17 targets for a more sustainable and equitable uh, planet. Uh, and so what the RBA has done is taken these 17 goals and taken the ones that are relevant to, uh, to architecture, to architects, and what we can do um, to, to help with that. And those specific elements are then uh, translated into the plan of work. Um, so we have, uh, have elements on net zero operational energy, net zero embodied energy and carbon, uh, sustainable water use, uh, as well as the health and well-being, uh, the sustainable life cycle values, that kind of thing. Uh, when, it look, when we look at the, um, the, uh, where we are at the moment, if we go, if we carry on as we are, uh, we are in the unsustainable practice column uh, going towards 2050. Um, if we keep on as we are with the, uh, the regulations that we have, we won't meet our climate targets. Um, and this graph is basically showing that the, uh, what we achieving, what we, what we aim to achieve is the, um, is a step, uh, in 2020, another step in 2025, and another in 2030. So we recognise that some practices, some uh, some projects are achieving the best uh, that they can be now. Um, there's very few, uh, but it's uh, we recognise that those 2030 targets can be achieved 
with the technology and the design that we uh, that we're currently seeing um, in um, particularly in the uh, the awards um, entered this year uh, and those that have subsequently been um, postponed till next year. Uh, but we know that um, that's not always the uh, the easy route. Um, not all clients are amazingly uh, forward thinking. So um, we understand that we have to have this step change between 2020, 2025 and 2030. When we look at the metrics themselves, um, these are the, the, so the red column there is, is where we are at the, at the moment, the current benchmarks. And that's when we're, we're not particularly measuring those, uh, so those three key metrics, the operational energy, the embodied energy and the body carbon. Uh, or the water use. Um, there are there, there are two separate um, targets for domestic and non-domestic because it, it's clear that the use of those buildings are, are are very different. And what you can see is as we go along towards 2030, the the targets are lowering um, uh, to as close to zero carbon as as we can. Uh, there are also some other metrics that are more about the health and well-being. So. Uh, we look to to reduce overheating uh, to 25 to 28 degrees Celsius for um, a maximum of 1% of occupied hours. Daylighting, we're, we're uh, very keen on CO2 levels within the uh, indoor air, uh, as well as the VOCs and formaldehyde. And these do sound very, uh, very technical, um, but the, I think it's, um, it, the, these are all achievable um, and it's, it's about getting us used to what these metrics mean and, and how to deliver them, that's the key. Uh, so thinking about that, um, I think one of the, the most important questions is what net zero actually means. And the UK Green Building Council have produced this document, which is uh, a framework definition. It states that uh, what it, it um, lists out what is included in their idea of net zero, which is the uh, the embodied energy in construction and the operational energy and the idea is to reduce those as much as you can um, then produce any energy on site if you can and offset, offset any remaining carbon where possible uh, and that's their definition it's, it's a useful um, a useful document mainly because we've had clients come to us saying that they want net zero carbon buildings, but they don't actually know what that means. So it's really important to understand that from the early stages. I'd also um, point people in the direction of the uh, London Energy Transformation Initiative, which is LETI. They have produced a huge amount of information, uh, a couple of guides, one on net zero operational carbon. This is um, a diagram that shows exactly what, uh, what they Think, and this is in line with the UK Green Building Council's definition, uh, but with some low energy use metrics on the side there. Uh, and it shows the whole life, uh, what we're looking for in terms of a, a net zero carbon building. When we're thinking about embodied carbon, I think that's one of the, the most tricky elements of, uh, of quantifying um, of our buildings, but also one that we have the most control over because we are normally the ones specifying the materials or at least having an idea of what is going into that specification. We have uh, a fair amount of control over what, um, uh, where that carbon is coming from. So these, these three documents are incredibly useful. Simon Sturgis's book on targeting zero is a, is a great book. It um, really defines what, uh, what we should be doing. Uh, and then the RBA guide, the RICS guide as well, um, both very useful documents. Letty again have produced uh, a primer and there are practices that are producing um, their own software. So Hawkins Brown have produced a, uh, a tool for Revit which uh, can export quantities uh, and give you a, an idea of what uh, impact, what embodied carbon your building will have um, and they, you can then compare those options it's, it's quite a, an interesting tool um, again UK Green Building Council has a uh, a guide on developing a brief with your client 
Um, this is probably aimed for uh, larger, um, uh, larger bodies um, like universities or, or, or like um, that would help them. Um, but there's also uh, other buildings, uh, other. Um, there's a, the um, other other documents there. Sorry. And in terms of training, um, there are a number of different organisations that are are looking at the uh, uh, how to um, skill uh, skill up the, uh, the the industry, particularly the um, the workforce, the the actual builders themselves. So you can be a passive house designer, but you can also be a passive house tradesperson. So uh, if you are um, if you're looking to tender for a build uh, for a project. Uh, asking if they have that tradesperson uh, qualification is really interesting. Um, I'd also say that uh, specifically to the east, uh, the Architects Declare movement have a, um, a an event on the 8th of December uh, that is free and if you know, as, as many people as, as can should sign up to it. It's, uh, they, it, it's clear that the, it's not just architects that need to uh, deal with this issue. It should be engineers, contractors, project managers. Um, we all need to join together and try and uh, come up with solutions to uh, to this pro to, to this problem. In terms of the, what the RBA are doing next, the uh, um, we're working with Letty to produce further documents on retrofit, uh, on sustainable policy benchmarking, as well as CPD and education. So there will be uh, a lot more. Uh, within the RBA um, parts ones and part twos uh, in climate education. And we're also looking for case studies on the uh, REBA 2030 challenge. So that's, um, that's pretty much it um, for, from me. Uh, hopefully that's, uh, that's a, a little bit of a, a starting point on the, the 2030 challenge. Um, it's a bit of an overview because I'm, I'm not necessarily an expert in absolutely each of these um, subjects, uh, but uh, hopefully it's a starting point for a uh, number of practices to, uh, to, to think about these issues.